Hello, this is just a quick video to show you how uh, the Unix makefile system works. Uh, just going to give you a quick overview on how you can build makefiles and won't be spending so much time on, on how they work or, or why they work. Uh, anyway, makefiles are used as a method for more easily and more quickly building applications when you start to work with multiple files. And as uh, an example, uh, what I'm going to work with here is uh, a, an application that's been divided into two, two source files and a header file. And just very quickly, if I look at student.h, uh, this here is a class that has been created representing a student and uh, this, so the class declaration is here in the header file and then I can also look at the source file and it contains the definitions for each of the member functions that the student class has. And then finally the, the third file is the application that uh, contains the main program and that just quickly creates a student runs it through its runs it through its paces for creating a couple member functions and that's it so three files uh, one thing I want you to note right now it'll be relevant uh, here in a, a couple moments is that if I look at student.cpp, uh, since it is working with the student class, I have included student.h here. And also that's true of this program uh, that I've named teststudent.cpp, also including student.h, because uh, this main function as well is using the student class. So with that as preamble, uh, the process for creating a make file is to identify the commands or the rules that need to be used to build an application from multiple files. And I've drawn uh, part of a diagram here to show you how you go about building an application. So the first step is to <clears throat> take your each source file and turn it into a compiled object file. And so this is a, a a the code in a machine readable form and these here would be referred to as the dependencies required to build this target so this here would be the target and obviously, student.cpp, you need the source code in order to, to build the object readable form. And we're because test student is including student.h, I would consider that a dependency as well. We have the same thing over here, where uh, student.cpp and student.h are the dependencies required to build this target, which is student.o. And finally, after you get these object files built. There's one more step where they all have to be combined together. I say all, there are only two of them here, but you could conceivably have a large project with as many as hundreds of object files uh, that ultimately get compiled together into a single executable. Now at this level, we have once again a set of dependencies and a target. So here, this is the target and this would be one of the dependencies, and this would be one of the dependencies. So to rephrase it slightly, uh, in order to build the executable, uh, it depends on test student.o and student.o existing. Likewise, in order to build test student.o, it requires test student.cpp and student.h, and in order to build student.o, you need student.cpp and student.h. So overall here we have three rules. Uh, a rule to build student.o, a rule to build test student.o, and a rule to build the executable. So now what we need to do then is put this uh, into what is referred to as the make file. And the make file is, um, is generally named as you see here, make file with the M uppercase. Uh, it's certainly not mandatory, it could be lowercase, but uh, more often than not, uh, it is made uppercase. And 
I've put the, the generic format here. So you can see in my text editor that the syntax highlighting is using different colors to help us out. Uh, you describe your target, you name your target here, you have a colon, and then you list, separated by spaces, the various dependencies that you have. And then finally, the command to build that target. So what I want to do first is I want to basically go from the top down. So I want to write this rule first for the items I've uh, shown in blue. Uh, my target is going to be the executable. I think I'm going to call the executable just test student. So that'll be my target. I'm going to leave that there for us to refer to. Uh, but I want to create an executable called test student, colon. Now it's going to depend on test student.o and, and student.o. So those go here. And then I hit return. And then finally, I put together the command. And actually the command for this is uh, pretty straightforward. I just list the object files. And then I don't want to forget my hyphen O option that I want to name the output. I don't want it to be called a.out. I want it to be called test students, uh, the, the name of my target. And so that's what G++ will do. It'll pull together these object files and turn it into this named executable right here. Okay. Uh, next, we need a rule to build these two, so I, it doesn't matter which one I choose first. I'll choose this teststudent.o. So I want to build teststudent.o, and that is going to require, uh, the dependencies are teststudent.cpp and student.h. And then the rule is uh, I go ahead and I put my CPP file here. Now if I try to do this, it's actually going to try to create an executable just like it has been happening from the beginning of the semester. Uh, I'm going to add a hyphen C option right after the G++. And what that tells G++ is uh, just compile it down until you get an object file. Don't try to turn it into an executable. Uh, so I add that dash C option, and then I do something very similar then for student.o here. I want to build student.o. That's my target. It's going to depend on student.cpp and also student.h. And then the command is going to be G++. I add the hyphen C option and then the CPP file that I'm compiling. And that right there is... Uh, pretty much a complete make file. There's one more command, one more rule that I'll add, and that's to clean up. Uh, specifically, th what you're ultimately interested in is you're interested in your source code. So it would be teststudent.cpp, student.h, and student.cpp. And once you build this application, you'll have test students sitting in your directory as well as student.o and teststudent.o. Uh, when you want to bundle this stuff together to submit an assignment, uh, you typically want to remove all of the object files in the executable. So we create a rule called clean, and it doesn't depend on anything. So I can uh, just uh, leave the dependencies blank, and the rule will be that I want to remove everything that ends in a dot O, and I also want to remove test students, the executable. Now, a note on how this is formatted. If you're doing this in Vim, then it's going to help you out by doing the indenting for you. You will have noticed that uh, all of these lines that have commands have been indented. And this is a very important part of make files. Uh, this right here is the tab character. So for these commands, the very first character has to be a tab. So that's a tab. That's a tab. In fact, I can go ahead and... Uh, change this so there it is Con that's control I which is a tab character so it's a tab character followed by the command if you do not have that then uh, the make file won't work correctly so having typed in this make file how do you run it uh, you just say make you don't say make with an uppercase M the actual utility in the file system is called make and what it does is it looks for 
a file named makefile with an uppercase M. And there it goes ahead and it runs the rule to create student.o, or I should say the command. It runs the command to create test student.o, and then it runs the command to create the test students executable. Now if I do an ls and look, uh, we can see here's the executable and then here are the intermediate object files that it created along the way. And then I can go ahead and, and run that. And there it works. Um, you'll note one of the interesting things about make files and part of their utility is that they're efficient on what rules need to be run. So for instance, if I make a change to test student dot cpp, um, maybe I will try to, let me change this to a 1.5 and I'll boost the grade display, boost the grade a second time and display. And now when I type make to rebuild my application, note that it's only doing two of the rules. It's doing the rule to create test student.o and then it's doing the rule to create the executable once again. So it did not have to rerun the rule to recreate student.o. So the make utility is intelligent enough to uh, note which files have changed and only run the rules uh, for those files that have changed. Uh, anyway, with that, that's about all there is to creating a make file. Thanks.